Howdy everyone, it's Luxball Gaming, and today I'm going to be playing Azumarill Double Ghost for the first time in the Open Great League. If you've never heard of this team, this was a pretty relevant team back in the old days of when the Go Battle League started. Basically, Azumarill is going to cover for the Ghost type's weakness to the Dark types, as Azumarill is generally running the Play Rough, which is a pretty good fairy move. Your two ghost types you use are Trevenant and Sableye. Sableye has almost always been a good safe switch. It's lately been like a spice pick overall last season and this season. I think it is a pretty fun pick to use as it's quite unexpected right now. Trevenant is a very flexible ghost type with also being part grass, which is a huge benefit in the open Great League. So. I think this team is actually very good to run right now because of the debut of Annihilate we've had last season. This entire team beats Annihilate. Another version of this team you can use is either taking out one of the ghost types for Annihilate. With this team, I was able to get 9 wins out of 13 battles. I'm counting battles out, 2 of them because I lagged out of them. I'm sorry I keep having to count out battles. Now yes, I still technically lose them, but like of course I'm not going to include them in the video. It's just the internet problems I'm having to deal with. As my Wi-Fi isn't working and mobile data I try to avoid playing on because it's inconsistent. So this easily proves that Azumarill Double Ghost is still an easily viable strategy you can use. I'm going to start also including in my videos, like the last one, how to build such this team. Like, of course you know how to build it, but how to actually grab the resources for it. So first off, I really, really, really hope you got a Sableye. We literally just had an event about it. It doesn't even have to have return. Now generally you probably should build one with return because it's way better. As a high rank Sableye performs worse than a Sableye with Return. This is my only Sableye I have right now. It was my very old Sableye I used in day one when the XL candies didn't exist. Right now the only efficient way to get an Azumarill right now is I believe the Go Battle League where you're probably going to have to get an inefficient IV floor. But this thing is very meta right now. I would definitely advise at least collecting the Pokemon and then you can worry about building another one later. The same thing goes for the Phantom. Now you can find some wild Phantoms here and there, but you can also get it as a Go Battle League reward. So not only is this a pretty good team to use in the Open Great League, it's quite accessible. So if you guys enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like as it increases this video's chance of being viewed by a larger audience. And if you'd never like to miss a video like this one again, make sure to subscribe. We're definitely getting close to 500 subscribers. Without further ado, let's take a look at our Azumarill Double Ghost line in the Open Great League. Now this end battle is going to be close as I think I could have thrown this Shadow Ball as banking this energy makes the opponent have a win con of catching a move later. I also did not play around Moonblast Cresselia. Playrough does some solid damage against the extremely bulky Cresselia. We get to the second Playrough on the CMP tie, and this Playrough takes out the opponent's Cresselia, and now we can just fast move down the Whiskash. Next game, Azumarill into Bassidon. Now, definitely a lackluster matchup just because we lack Hydro Pump. Let's talk about movesets on Azumarill while we use this team. I think Play Rough is almost a mandatory onto the Azumarill as you need an answer for Dark types. Hydro Pump could be a decent alternative, but it's more expensive and becomes much higher risk, higher reward. Ice Beam is a pretty good move, it's a great coverage move, it's Azumarill's cheapest move, so it can use it to bait. This move isn't mandatory, so I think you always run Play Rough, and you can have the choice of Ice Beam or Hydro Pump. Another reason to run Play Rough is the Mirror Match, otherwise you kind of want to switch out into one of your Ghost types, which isn't very ideal to be able to beat the opponent's Azumarill. So quick summary on this game, their team was Bastidon, Annihilate, Shadow Victory Bell, which is basically just the same thing, Annihilate. 
used to be Medicham. I threw a charge move in this matchup as they had a one turn bring in so I was always ahead. That time I didn't have to throw any charge moves so I could fast move down the rest of the team. Pretty funny to say we could fast move down the opponent's team when their team is basically based off fast moves. Next game, opponent led with a Medicham. The target was Annihilate, but Medicham basically just plays the same role. We even bluff a Hydro Pump against the Bastidon, which is quite wild they want to shield that as well. I absorb some energy onto my Azumarill and then switch into my Sableye. Assuming this is a fast move team, I'm going to shield a Stone Edge as it's either going to be Shadow Victory Bell in the back or there's still a decent possibility it's Wigglytuff. Actually, this is a game where it is Wigglytuff. So we do get a Power Gem. Here's the one opportunity where Power Gem is going to prove to be better than the Return as it's more reliable to get to. I get the shield with the Ice Beam. I'm going to no shield this and keep a shield for my Trevenant and luckily I'm able to call an Icy Wind. I do two bubbles. I'm close to a charge move onto the Azumarill. The charms may have risked knocking me out, but smackdowns and the counters are going to deal less. So Seed Bomb knocks out the Wigglytuff, in comes the Bastion. They switch into their Medicham, I think they had more energy than I thought. This is only a power up punch, I can just basically CMP tie to the next power up punch, but I guess I had 100 energy. We Shadow Ball the Medicham, I can Shadow Ball the Bastion, and just like that, the Trevenant is going to get a 1v3 against another fast move based team. Next game, we have Azumarill into Annihilate. So Azumarill wins all even shield scenarios in this matchup. However, we are going to want to switch out as they're definitely going to have some counters to some ghost types. As Annihilate can only deal any meaningful damage to ghost types with the Shadow Ball or Night Slashes. They shield the play rough. I'm going to switch into my Sableye. They immediately throw a Night Slash, which I'm going to no shield, and then they bring in a Carbink. Luckily, we're not a return Sableye, but Power Gem doesn't do much for us either. So we land the first Power Gem, Carbink being the extreme tank it is, shrugs that damage off like it's nothing. Carbink is basically just like a alternative to the Bastidon with I believe a better typing overall. I'm going to try to keep a shield for my Trevenant to have a chance to win this game. We definitely need to shield this rock slide as Trevenant is going to take too much fast move damage and we might get fast move down by something. Their final Pokemon is a Dugong so this is basically Annihilate Bastidon Dugong with the alternative of Carbink. And I'd say this is a pretty fast move based team as the rock throws, ice shards are adding up Counter is a pretty powerful move, even into the Trevenant, it's glassy. I try to throw an alignment because this Seed Bomb will knock out, and I'm hoping to have enough HP to sweep. That's not going to happen. This Carbink gets a 1v3 versus us. I guess one way I could have played that differently is I played the mashup into the Annihilate, and then I win Switch Advantage there. Moving on into our next game, Azumarill into Shadow Claw, Shadow Alolan, Sand Slash. They go for a drill run, you can obviously see that a level 40 Azumarill almost looks like it gets 2 hit KO'd with Shadow Claws and drill runs. I come into my A Slash after absorbing some energy, oof they full sent the drill run. I thought my opponent was going to switch and they did and it's a Azumarill in the back. Now I'm expecting it to be Sableye as I've definitely seen this team comp as well. I get 2 power gems on the Sableye which I'm now curious if Two power gems are better than a return and foul play. So I'm going to try to bank a move onto my Azumarill and then switch into my Trevenant to have a shield to clean up this game. Actually, I didn't bank a move on my Azumarill. I think this is now game over now that I'm realizing it as the Shadow of Lulin Sandslash is going to get my shield. I think they're going to be able to reach another Ice Punch. So I throw the Seed Bomb. I think they're one or two away from the charge move. And I'm not going to be able to beat the Azumarill, so basically what I'm just going to do is just try to see their third. Ice Punch easily takes us out. I get the Bubble Farm down versus the Shadow of Lone Sand Slash. They come in with their Azumarill. I throw the play rough. Now we can see their third Pokemon. And I kind of regret seeing it knowing it's Annihilate as we kind of just got wrecked by a Slash and the Azumarill. Next game we have an Azumarill Mirror. Finally, a good reason why to run a non-XL Azumarill as you're most likely going to win CMP in this matchup. 
So I immediately go for my play rough, which three play roughs should knock out a Azumarill. If both the Azumarills are ranked extremely high, the Azumarills can survive three play roughs. Now I'm going for the second play rough. Opponent hasn't fallen for any of my CMPs on the play rough, but I'm still confident I win CMP. And even if I don't, I'm going to get energy on one of my ghost types. They switch into Charger Bug. This is actually um, a good learning opportunity as Charger Bug is kind of a problem for this team. It's super effective into the zoom roll, of course. And then the Volt Switch and X Scissor spam is real. I get a successful Seed Bomb bait. However, they're just going to immediately throw their next X Scissor. I'm going to try to win this game with my Sableye. I don't know if this is a good play or not. This thing is just so spammy into my team. So foul play. The Charger Bug is double shielding. It's really looking to do some damage. I guess they really wanted this X Scissor. So I'm going to over farm some energy. I am going to shield this. Now I think the Azumarill does have a play rough. So I'm going to switch into my Azumarill. I'm able to play rough their Azumarill. Maybe I should have over farmed in this matchup. As now Charger Bug can come in and X Scissor my Sableye. And our chances of winning this game is most likely no. X Scissor, you can see, is pretty decent damage. Hold up, they have a Skeletor Urch in the back. By the way, I looked at this game and Power Gem does less damage than a Foul Play. I say it's BM because we still ended up winning by the narrowest of margins. Just to show how bad of a move the Power Gem is. Next game, we have another Azumarill Mirror. Okay, I'm pumping up the speed this time. This is the same thing as last game. We're just going to immediately go for play roughs and most likely win switch because we're running non-XL Azumarill. I mean, other than that, it's not much to do. Like, how am I supposed to read the opponent's team if we don't know what else they have in the back? As it's quite hard to team read when it's just one Pokemon. So the opponent did go for the play rough CMP on the second and on the third. Next, they send in a Sableye. Now, I switch into my Sableye to bait out any potential dark types, and the opponent is ahead by one Shadow Claw, and they play the mirror match correctly, throwing a foul play immediately, because I'm now down a Shadow Claw, which is quite impactful in the mirror matchup. However, we're barely able to survive the foul play, and we're going to be able to land this onto the Sableye, and now Trevenant doesn't really have a threat. Opponent's final Pokemon is the Altaria. I'm not baiting here, as an Ice Beam is going to deal more, and the Shadow Ball and the Shadow Claws will add up. They interestingly enough shield the Shadow Ball. I guess they forgot I had a Zoomerill, or they were relying on I didn't have Ice Beam. Ice Beam almost one shots the Altaria. One Bubble takes out the Altaria. Two Bubbles takes out the Sableye. Next game, we have a Zoomerill into Annihilate again. Hopefully, we can win this game. So opponent is staying into this matchup as they can stay in basically with shield. They try catching a charge move, but I'm still going to throw this play rough as we don't have an obvious answer to do gong. So I went for a play rough. I go for a play rough on the CMP tie. I mean, there's no real impact about this, but I guess they don't get like an ice shard through. As after I do this, I'm going to look to switch into my Sableye and I can foul play on the CMP tie before they can get an icy wind. So Foul Play is going to take out the opponent's Dugong. They send in their final Pokemon, Charchabug. I am going to build up to a Power Gem, although they most likely will just shield a Foul Play. So we shield the first X Scissor. Now we're going to go for the Foul Play, which does get the shield from the Charchabug. Now they're immediately throwing their energy. I'm really hoping I can survive this X Scissor, and I barely do. They catch onto the Annihilate. I think they got a one turn bring in too, because they didn't get a counter. So I send in my Trevenant, I'm going to just farm this down, they go for a Night Slash. Maybe I could have no shielded because I would have called the Night Slash, because if they boosted, we would have just lost our Trevenant. Now, can we beat Charger Bug with a Shield Advantage? I'm going to go for the Seed Bomb, which is going to get some chip damage, or a shield. I was going to go for the Seed Bomb, but do you see how slow it came up? It came so slow, I wasn't able to click it, and that's going to cost us the game. I don't think I was counting this game either, so I tried my best to make a catch. So I guess that's another error, but if I just had the Seed Bomb, I would have been able to beat the Charger Bug. Without it, we're not going to be able to deal enough damage to Charger Bug. I think I still count that as a legitimate loss, and it wasn't like the game's fault because there was still like a way out for me. 
I mean, the game did play a partial role into making me lose that game. But let's just move on into this next game, Azumarill into Quagsire. Quagsire has been recommended on PV Poke to run the Aqua Tail, but people still choose to run the Mud Bomb, which makes sense because the Lantern matchup would become pretty painful. So we tank two Mud Bombs, I go for an Ice Beam on the Quagsire. Two Ice Beams basically knock it out, so I'm able to get a shield. I think I'm going to look to switch out now as I absorb the energy on Azumarill. They send in a Bastidon. This matchup is definitely in favor of the Bastidon, just considering that it has a heavy stat product advantage, and the Smackdowns and Stone Edge might knock out our Sableye. I'm going to commit a shield as our team's getting a little low on HP. So we do shield the Stone Edge on the Bastidon. I'm going to go for the next foul play. I think I'll be able to get the farm down after this next foul play lands. I get the farm down. I have a foul play ready. They had a charge move on Quagsire. I'm just going to let this go since I didn't throw the foul play because now I can get energy on Trevenant. Their final Pokemon is a Shadow Victory Bell. So they ran a Quagsire, Bastidon, Shadow Vic team. And they know they can't actually beat the Trevenant and they top left. Final game, Azumarill into another Medicham. They switch into a Sableye, so they're immediately ABA weak to Fairy. I'm going to go for this play rough immediately. I think I'm also going to stay in this matchup as our backline doesn't want to face the Sableye. I tried calling a foul play bait. They full sent the return. Here's more why you should run a XL Azumarill because a return and a resisted foul play still knock us out. So they also had residual energy. I'm going to just commit a shield here. As our entire team beats the Medicham luckily, so we didn't need switch, I farm up some energy. Foul play will take out the opponent's Sableye. Their final Pokemon is Lantern. I'm going to look to catch a move onto the Trevenant, and that's successful. Now this should be a win, as they no longer have a way to answer the Trevenant. I think they got an invisible counter on the switch, so I shield. This is an Ice Punch. I'm going to go for the back-to-back -back Seed Bombs. Now my opponent could shield or no shield this. They choose the no shield. I'm going to go for the second seed bomb immediately. My opponent, you're going to see they choose to shield this. And now, if my switch clock is up, I'll switch into my Trevenant. Sorry, my Sableye. Now I have about two foul plays. So I throw the first foul play. It does some very solid damage against the Lantern. I overfarm perfectly on the CMP tie to foul play the Lantern. And this second foul play actually is enough to take out Lantern. This Azumarill double ghost strategy was extremely fun. Probably because it utilizes three heavy meta Pokemon. And I generally don't run those teams as often as I should. Azumarill always just good into the meta. Sableye is definitely being brought back more. And it's still a quite nice surprise. And then Trevenant is just a flexible Pokemon by itself. That's going to be it for today's video. I'm Luxball Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.